They called the first search engine Archie. That's because it was the word archive without the letter V. It looked absolutely nothing like the search engines we have today, but it was a good start. And that's what we're learning about today, the history of search engines. Archie, we had other search engines like Jughead and Veronica. I swear to you, I am not making that up. Throughout the 90s, about a bajillion search engines popped up. Flib, Excite, Oliweb, InfoSeek, AltaVista, Webcrawler, Lycos, Yahoo, Hotbot. And then there were a whole class of search engines like Webcrawler, which were web crawlers. A web crawler is just a little computer program that goes out, looks at your site, looks at the pictures and the text and everything that you have on your website. It indexes all your pages and looks at what other pages you've linked to that are off your site and it follows those links and looks at those sites and indexes those sites as well. Over time as it sees more and more sites it builds out its network of other websites that it's finding. And even today that's primarily how your website is found. Yahoo! They were a little different. They were a directory not so much a search engine. Like a yellow pages for the web. In 1994 Yahoo! set out to enter every site on the internet into their super directory by hand. The folks at Yahoo quickly saw the problem that they were encountering, however, because by the end of 1994, there were over 10,000 websites. And by the end of 1995, there were 100,000 websites. In 1994, it was still possible to publish a physical book that listed all the sites on the internet. You can still go to Amazon and pick up one of these things for cheap. Even with hundreds of different search engines to choose from, it was still incredibly difficult to find anything on the web. Spammers would stuff their sites with keywords. You might need the exact title of what you're looking for to actually find it. And misspellings, something I do extraordinarily well, sent you to a parallel universe. Then came Google. No, Google gets to play the hero in this story. People today know of Google as an eyewear company, but they got their start as a search engine. An amazingly great search engine. Google started in 1996. Its original name was Backrub. Backrub? Backrubs are about as creepy as a publicly traded company knowing everything about your life based on your internet usage. Be nice to Google Day. Come on, I can do this. But awkwardness aside, Google's search itself was light years beyond anybody else's. The key to success for Google were hyperlinks. Google's search engine made the assumption that if a lot of websites were linking to another website, that site must be a pretty good resource. So if a lot of book review sites were linking back to Amazon in order to buy those books, Google was making the assumption that Amazon must be a pretty good site. Amazon would therefore rank higher on the page than other bookstores. This principle is the basis of Google search even to today. Of course, this didn't solve all the problems. You still have spammers and other people trying to game the system. In fact, the entire SEO industry is built on gaming Google's algorithm. I can't think of anything more annoying than SEO. Hey, it's me, Acronym Man. Okay, yeah, there's one thing. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Thanks, Acronym Man. All right, I should explain why I do not like SEO. Right what Google wants more than anything else is when you search to get the best results that you possibly can. Over time, websites optimize themselves in order to get better rankings within Google. But just because you know the rules that Google is playing by doesn't mean that your content is better than the other content out there. So to counteract this, Google ends up changing its algorithm periodically to rank those sites that are gaming the system lower. The problem I have with SEO is that you're paying money to only temporarily boost your ranking. As Google changes their system, you have to pay more money to keep up in the system. This isn't Google's fault. This is your fault. If your content was better and more relevant, you would rank higher. So here's my suggestion. Don't spend money on SEO. Spend money on good writers. Spend money on good video people. Spend money on good designers. Make your content better. Make it more interesting. People talk about interesting content. People blog about interesting content. People tweet about it. People post it on Facebook. And that helps your Google ranking. Not only that, but the content is so much more memorable and interesting than blog posts that are stuffed full of keywords just to be read by a robot, not a human. All right, I think I, uh, I think I got that out of my system. Google's been so successful with the way that they rank their websites, Companies like Yahoo and Bing have been copying the way they do it ever since. That's a wrap. That's the end of episode four, the history of search engines. If you enjoyed it, share it with a friend. Also, don't forget to subscribe and thanks.